After the rotor to case clearances are set, it's time to take the blower over to the drill press so that I can run a reamer through the dowel pin holes to put in the new oversized dowel pins. It's going to be very important to make sure that the blower is perfectly square on the drill press table so that the dowel pin holes will be in a straight line. You don't want the dowel pins to be at an angle or you won't be able to get the plates on and off the blower. The way that I accomplished this is I took a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and I cut a window out in the middle of it. This allows the raised bearing bosses and the ends of the rotor shafts to protrude through the wood so that only the bolts support the blower case, keeping it at a perfect 90 degrees to the drill press table. I used my Easy Tram tool to make sure that the table of the Clausing drill press was perfectly perpendicular to the spindle. I chucked the reamer up very short with only about three quarters of an inch of the reamer shank being gripped by the drill chuck jaws. It's normal for the shank of the tool to flex a little bit during operation as the reamer self centers in the hole, so I wanted to leave as much of the shank exposed as possible. Also, reamers do not need to be run at very high speeds. My closing drill press has a three phase motor being run off of a Westinghouse frequency drive. So I turned the speed down to 30 hertz or half speed to get 150 spindle RPM. The slowest mechanical speed with the very drive on the Klausing is about 300 RPMs. So this is another advantage to running tools off of VFDs in a home shop where three phase power is just not available. I've done something different with dowel pins than what most people do. The SA Designs book shows Gene Mooneyham, a very well respected professional blower builder, opening up the dowel pin holes to the next standard size which is 3 8 of an inch. This is certainly the way to go for professionals that must turn out work quickly. I didn't like the idea of opening the dowel holes so far in case I made a mistake or if I had to change an end plate in the future and needed to move things around again. So I elected to do a custom size, slightly oversized pin. I purchased a 36 inch length of 01 drill rod from McMaster with a diameter of 0.323, which is the diameter of a letter P drill. This is ground rod that is manufactured to very close tolerances and only costs about six and a half dollars. I mic the drill rod when it arrived and it measures between 0.323 and 0.3232 along its entire length, which would make it a very light press fit and end plates when using a standard letter P reamer. I purchased the reamer off of Amazon for under $5 as an add-on item, so it's very affordable to use this method to size the dowel pin holes. I cut two dowel pins one inch long and two dowel pins at two inches long on the cutoff wheel. I finished off the pins by taking them over to the disc sander and carefully chamfering the ends. The dowel pin is supposed to be a hard press fit in the bearing plate and a slip fit into the blower case. The standard method of doing this is to use a 5 tenths undersized reamer for the press fit and a 5 tenths oversized reamer for the slip fit. To simplify tooling and to eliminate one additional reaming process, I used only a single letter P reamer which sized the holes the same in both the bearing plate and the blower case. I wanted to test my fit after reaming the holes without altering my good blower parts, so I took a piece of scrap aluminum drilled a 5 16 hole in it and reamed that hole with the letter P reamer. This gave me a very light press fit as I expected, so I used Loctite Red to secure the pin in the hole. I let it dry for two days, took it over to the arbor press to confirm that the pin could be readily pressed out of it, 
if it ever needed to be in the future. It pressed out easily, so this is a sound method for securing the pin into the bearing plates. The next step was to use the pullers that I had made earlier to remove the rear bearing plate. After pulling the bearing plates, I test fit the pins into the holes in the blower case and they were not a slip fit, which is really what I expected. Like the fit in the bearing plates, the pins at their nominal size would be slightly too tight for the blower case. To cure this, I took the pins over to the lathe and chucked them up with about half inch protruding past the chuck so I could take some medium grit emery cloth and reduce the pin diameter. If you look closely at the micrometer, you can see that the case side of the pin measures about 0.3226 right now, just right for a slip fit into the blower case hole. I tap the pins into the bearing plates, leaving about 0.400 protruding to fit into the holes in the blower case. I set the end plate onto the blower case and as you can see from this video, I have a very nice close tolerance slip fit. If I rock the bearing plate from side to side at all during removal, the plate wants to wedge in place so I know that my holes are parallel and of the correct size. The front cover still has the smaller .312 or 5 16 holes in it, so I needed to address that before buttoning everything up. I ran the reamer through one hole on the front cover and then set the front cover in place on the bearing plate. Next I took the assembly over to the drill press and ran the reamer through the other hole on the bearing plate all the way through the front cover to ensure that both holes on the front cover would line up exactly with the short length of dowel pin left protruding from the bearing plate. The dowel pin section of this project ends with the final installation of the pins into the bearing plates held in with a little bit of Loctite red. I was very careful to wipe up any Loctite that was left on the surface of the pins to prevent that Loctite from interfering with the slip fit in the blower case.